love your humor. I love the way you make me laugh hysterically at, at some of the silly things I do and vice versa become a subject of humor and criticism at the same time. Four, I love your determination. Even though at times it's been a detriment as you've fallen off ladders, <laughs> nothing will stop you if you're determined to do something. Stubborn. Yeah. <laughs> Five, I love luxuriating in the happiness of your heart as I see you take pleasure working in the garden, fishing, challenging yourself to make things, fix things and more. I look forward to a lifetime of taking pleasure in the things you love as I come to love them too and you all the more. And these are my statements now to Gloria. I love you for overlooking all of my weaknesses that affect your life and highlighting the joy that we give to each other. I just want you to know that wherever there is loving and cooking, there is where I want to be with you. I love your winged life like an uncaged bird, darting here and there, searching for beauty, refusing to be captured by someone's philosophy or creed. I love your survival skills your unusual interest, your risk-taking, your openness to new ideas, and most of all, your courage to speak your mind. I know I am in trouble when you begin a conversation with that four-word introduction, we need to talk. <laughs> I love you for making our house a home. I do believe the furnace is warmer when you are there. I believe the hot water heater sounds happier with its gurgles and rumbles when you are around. Even your 70 paintings which adorn the walls, <laughs> they seem to come to attention and brighten their colors when you are home. But I would rather look at you than all the paintings in the world, especially Picasso and Matisse. <laughs> because of you, the clutter of my life and home became a masterpiece, except for the garage. <laughs> you are the reason that beauty is everywhere. Okay, <laughs> these are my promises to Mel. I promise to love and respect you all the minutes and days of my life. To me, this means when we agree and find a common ground, as well as when we disagree. I promise not to think or insist I'm right, but to see why and how your opinion may be just as right or more right than mine. I promise to understand and value your hopes and desires in your personal growth, your spiritual growth, and in your loving growth with me. In our technological age of iPads, iPhones, texting, and messaging, I promise to be fully present when you talk to me. And when there are no distractions, I promise to be a better listener. I promise to be deserving of your love. In order to do this, I promise to have dignity, humor, seriousness, and gaiety. I <laughs> I promise this in easy times and difficult times, in sickness and in health, until we do part. Wow, looks like a tissue break and we'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> <That's cute. laughs> so. I promise my promises to her. I promise to give the highest priority to kindness and gentleness which you deserve. I promise to focus on what is right between us when frustrations and pain temporarily cloud out the sun. I will always know the sun is still there. 
I promise to let you hold the TV remote <laughs> and not quarrel when you store green algae in the ice trays <laughs> and put one tablespoon of leftover soup back in the refrigerator. <laughs> but most of all, most of all, I promise to love you forever and one day. Realizing that at our age, forever will not be long enough for us to be together. We're going to close the ceremony with a wine ceremony. And I know you've been looking at this is going to be some <laughs> wine ceremony. <clears throat> we will be sealing our promises and our statements that we have made by the drinking from a common cup. Wine is bitter and sweet, and so is life. We drink from this cup, not knowing what the future holds, but we do know that there will be bitterness and there will be sweetness. And we will share all of that together. The bitterness will be more acceptable because we share it together. And also the sweetness will be more enhanced because of our love for each other. The bitterness will only be a challenge for our growth and our learning, but the sweetness will be ours to remember forever at all times. And so as we look at this cup of wine, the bitterness and sweetness, it contains our future, which is a mystery to us. But we share in the presence of these witnesses that we're going to share all of life together, not knowing what is before us. Do you dare? I dare. <laughs> Just one sip. We cannot understand the random happenings of life, be it pain or peace. Our happiness will be one of sharing all of life together and expressing gratitude for the privilege to live life. We're going to have also an unusual event because of who you are. And we will call it a community wine ceremony. We will close our ceremony with a group toast to all of life and to all of you. Your journey will have bitterness and sweetness also. And so if you dare, not knowing what is before you, you will gather as a family to drink to all of our journeys, our individual journeys. And the bitterness and sweetness will be implied by sharing our wine together. And whatever the future holds, we want the attitude of bring it on. Bring mm. it on. We will do it. Those, not yet. <laughs> those, of us raised, those of us raised around the swamps of Louisiana, mainly Bob and myself, can appreciate the words of Emerson, who wrote these words, quote Emerson, even in the mud and scum of things, there is always something that sings. Again, even in the mud and scum of things, thinks Louisiana Swamp, there is always something that sings. And so when life gets rough for any of us, May we listen closely for the singing. As we close this service with a group toast, your bitterness, your sweetness will be emphasized. And not knowing what is before you, you will drink as a mystery. For indeed, no matter what your wildest imagination is, you will not know what you're drinking toward. I'm going to ask then that my helpers would come forward, Don, now, and also Brian, and pass 
give a cup to each of you. And Thank you, Mr. Don. Thank you, Danny. <laughs> you got two. First of all, take a sip from the from the glass. I want you to taste the bitterness and sweetness. Just a sip. Taste the bitterness and sweetness. Mm. Now close your eyes or bow your head and think of your journey thus far. Take a deep breath and think of bitterness in your life. Bitterness from relationship, health, career, maybe a mistake you made, a bad decision, an unpleasant surprise. But you cannot go back and fix bitterness. Life only goes forward. There's no <coughs> rewind button here. So learn from bitterness, but do not dwell on it. So if you would, take another breath and gradually let the bitterness gently go. Take another sip. And now take a deep breath and think of the sweetness of your life. Again, relationship, health, career, success, good decision, pleasant surprises. Rest on those things. But do know that you will find a new sweetness in the present. Don't get stuck on past sweetness. Enjoy the memories. They're always yours. But the good old days, they're gone. There is more sweetness where that came from. We need to make room for our joy by letting go of the past sweetness. Joy is everywhere. Take a deep breath, take a sip, and let the past sweetness gently go away. So I'm going to ask if you would stand if you can. And this is what our celebration is about. It's about gratitude for all of life, the bitterness and the sweetness. So raise your glass and we're going to toast to all of life. Repeat after me. To, to all, all of life. life. And now with feeling. To, to all, all of life. life. And so let it be. Let Enjoy it be. your wine. And the upcoming evening.